What is going on you guys? It's Zach and gonna be reacting to how I retired early at 41 years old with $850,000 in Tennessee. Let's jump into it. Believe it or not, I was really nervous about quitting my full-time job. I had so much anxiety around it because all I've known is how to work. But I learned. So I quit my job about six months ago and I can tell you that it is a very stressful process. So nothing but respect to this lady and anyone else who took the jump of quitting their full-time job. But I learned after seeing so many friends and family be laid off during the pandemic that no job is safe. May 31st, 2021 was my last day of full-time employment. That was my last paycheck. My guess is that she either has rental properties or has some kind of cash flowing asset that is able to cover her expenses. I watch family members use their hands to do jobs. So cleaning jobs, janitorial, nanny jobs. I really wanted to make them proud and go to college and live the American dream or what I thought was the American dream. American dream, go to university, get $100,000 in debt and then work for the next 20 years, 30 years, 40 years to pay off that debt. What a dream. I initially decided that I wanted to retire at 45 years old. I think that's a goal that a lot of us have. I want to retire at 40, I want to retire at 50. And so I started on this path to fire because my investments grew and I realized that times were just getting harder at work. Associate professor making 150K a year. Solid, I didn't know they made that much. Analytics. Being a professor was a very stressful time during the pandemic. Everything moved online. The expectations for being a perfect online teacher were at a max. Students had needs. I was homeschooling my children. There was just so much stress and it just became a really tough situation. I decided that, wow, you know what? I can actually go ahead and lean fire and stop working full time earlier than I had expected with a little bit less money than I expected and I could still fire. So for those who don't know, fire means financially independent, retire early. Uh, doing it by 41 years old is, is a very solid thing to do. It's essentially being able to have enough income to cover your monthly expenses without having that full time job, whether that's in the form of real estate investments, stock dividends, other cash flowing assets, things of that nature. When I fired in May of 2021, I had accumulated $850,000 in investments. And I determined that that was enough based on the fire calculation of having 25 times what you need to live on. So that's also known as the 4% rule. I was wondering if that was what they were doing. So even though that was lower, that 850K was lower than my number, I knew that I could still do speaking engagements, I'll still sell my book, I could do these side hustles, I have an Etsy shop, right? So I have other ways of creating income so that I knew I didn't need to have my full nest egg of a million dollars to live. So 850K has been fine and my investments have continued to grow even though I haven't contributed any more money since I early retired. My investments have grown to over $900,000. I wonder if they're gonna break down what these investments actually are, whether it's all in the stock market or if there's, I'm assuming she has at least a primary residence for real estate, but I'm very interested to hear, you know, what these assets are. Over 50% of my investment portfolio is the S&P 500 index fund. It's I jumped the gun, okay. Better than that. It's well diversified. It's 500 of the companies we all know and love. You can recognize them by name and they have really been good to my portfolio. Then I would say another, about 25% of my portfolio is the total stock market index. So if the stock market overall is up, then my portfolio is up. And then probably another, the other 25% of my portfolio has a mix of bonds, some REITs, and some individual stocks in companies like Apple and Amazon. Okay, so very heavily invested into the stock market. 
I, I suppose the only form of real estate would be the REIT, the Real Estate Investment Trust, unless she also owns her primary residence. A typical day for me starts out with, of course, getting up around 6.30 to get the kids ready for school. So I get up, make their breakfast, wake them up, get them ready, and then I'll start working on whatever's important to me. Typically, that will be maybe someone has reached out to me that has questions about their budget or I have mentees who are starting new jobs right now and they're asking me about their 401k and how how much should they invest in it and what is it? I know that they're calling this time period a couple of different things. One, the great resignation because all the employees are dipping. I kind of did that. And two, the gig economy, meaning that there are people out there who are very well versed in investing, who are selling their knowledge as a consulting fee or an education, a course. So it's very interesting to see over the next 20 years, how the gig economy will play out. What else do I do in a day? I don't know, the day, believe it or not, the days go fast when you're fired. And I do have some things that are really special to me and that are important to have. So I'm not saying never buy another purse, never buy another pair of shoes. I don't think that's life, that's not realistic, but your whole wardrobe, just kind of look at it and say, how much of this do I really need? Just I think about this frequently. I wear the same 10 outfits. That's pretty much it. Does this really bring me value? Could I be investing this money in something that's gonna bring me a return? And so that's kind of how I look at it. When I was on my fire journey and I was cutting out, I, I literally went through my budget line by line and every single thing that I had, I removed it. So if I had a subscription to Audible, got rid of it. And I went to the library instead. It's always interesting to hear people who go on this fire journey cutting down on their costs, whether it be subscriptions or downsizing their place that they're living. I'm currently on the journey myself. So I'm always interested to hear how other people are doing it. And I think she's going about it in a very smart way. Those subscriptions will take your money. Rent audiobooks from the library. Like everything in that budget, I said, where can I find a substitute for this? How can I either get it for free or drastically reduce the price of it or the cost of it? And the thing about FIRE is that you just want to spend time doing the things that are meaningful to you. I no longer have a boss but I still do things that are important to me. So I think that's the important concept is that fire gives you choices. That's the biggest thing about retiring early is you have the freedom to choose what you want to do. That's what I love about the fire community is that it's not about relaxing on a beach while a pretty woman feeds you grapes. It's more about not having to answer to that boss that you don't like or whatever have you. I own you. You're my bit. Fire gives you opportunities. So I don't want anyone to think that, oh, you fire and then you just ride off into the sunset and no one ever hears from you again and you just never do anything again. No, now I'm actually living my life more fully. When I think about what's next for me, man, I, it's, there's just so many opportunities out there, but I want to stay grounded. I want to stay focused on my children, spending quality time with them because that's what they want. They don't ask for things. For Christmas, they ask for two or three things at max. They want time. They want experiences. And so that's really what's next for me, planning out my, my travel schedule for 2022. And I'll just see where life takes me. Well, hey, nothing but respect. She has a great outlook on life. There are two different ways to go about fire. One is like the 4% rule or the 25X rule, meaning that you need to have 25 times what you need to live on per year. I believe that's what it is. Uh, the other one is when your income from your investments on a monthly basis cover your monthly expenses. Let's say you're making $10,000 a month in rental income and you need 7,500 a month to live off of technically you're financially independent. So there are two different ways to go about it. But in terms of her journey, I like it. I think she went about it in a very smart way. Personally, I am very invested in the stock market uh, and cryptocurrency, 
but I do want to have the majority of my portfolio in real estate because like I said, it's the different way to go about fire where your monthly income covers your expenses. And I think the best way to do that is through real estate. But that is it for me on this one. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and check out my main channel linked in the description below.